once, just as we were beginning to start Tuesday evening Mass in the chapel, the power went out. The chapel was suddenly totally dark. Nobody moved. But then I noticed my iPad, like a light, shining in the dark. Jesus has that sense. The light is within him. So even after hearing the ominous and dark news that John had been arrested, Jesus is not paralyzed. He acts. He withdrew to Galilee. Now, Galilee is to Jerusalem what Iowa is to New York City. Jesus left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, He does not move to the larger cities like Tiberias or Sepphoris, the centers of imperial, political, and cultural power in Galilee. Instead, Jesus locates himself among the marginal, with the poor, not the wealthy, with the rural peasants, not the urban elite, with the ruled, not the rulers, with the powerless, not the powerful. We heard the reading from Isaiah at Christmas Eve Mass. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The source of deep darkness at that time was likely the mighty Assyrian Empire, who was known for their great cruelty and who eventually would destroy the northern kingdom and terrorize the people of Jerusalem. But empires come and empires go. So the darkness can also refer to the darkest of dark times under the Babylonian Empire. We might imagine this darkness during the Babylonian exile as the darkness of the tomb. The children of Israel cried out to God, our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, we are left here to die in a foreign land. In the famous passage about the dry bones, the prophet Ezekiel hears a rattling and the bones come together, bone to its bone. Ezekiel proclaimed, thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves and bring you back. God is gathering together what has been separated and scattered. But Isaiah imagines a different darkness. Here's the next verse we heard on Christmas Eve. For a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. Rather than the darkness of the tomb, Isaiah could be imagining the darkness of the womb, that God is laboring to bring something new to birth. As Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 22, we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. The light is about to be born into this world. The kingdom of heaven has come near. As Americans, we're taught to keep church and state separate. But there is no such separation in the biblical world. In the verses immediately preceding today's gospel, Jesus is in the wilderness where he is tempted by the devil. And in the final temptation, Matthew makes the political connection explicit. The devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world that could be his. The devil can give the kingdoms of this world to Jesus because all the kingdoms operate by the same principle. And the clue is in the Greek word for devil, diabolos. It's a word that gives us diabolical. It means slanderer or one who falsely accuses. So Jesus casts out the diabolical one, and then he calls his first disciples. 
All throughout his ministry, Jesus goes around casting out demons, and he gives his disciples the same authority. So Jesus is creating an alternative kind of community, a community that rejects what the Diabolos is trying to do. Jesus begins forming this new community immediately after hearing the news that John has been arrested. Jesus calls his disciples to join him in proclaiming the good news, curing every disease and sickness, casting out demons, bringing people into wholeness, repairing and restoring unity. Only one thing is needed to bring this kingdom to birth. Repent. Now we think that repentance is something that we do, as if repentance is promising God, I can do better. I don't need a merciful God if I can do better, only a patient one who will wait long enough for me to do better. But the biblical idea of repentance was more like a change of heart, turning around, a new attitude. The Greek word metanoia means a transformation of one's whole mentality. So Jesus is prophetically telling his listeners to do a mental turnaround, to turn from self-centeredness and self-reliance to concern for others and trust in God. The reign of God begins when we let God begin to reign in our hearts. The news about the reign of God is good because Jesus proclaims that God is with us. And when we lose ourselves enough to find the Lord, we discover his presence, Emmanuel, God with us. All that is needed is to repent, to turn and face God, recognizing God's presence. The news of the reign of God is good because it means that God's power is with us. So Jesus sends us, just as he did the first apostles throughout the whole region, to proclaim the good news that the kingdom is at hand. When Jesus announces the good news that God's kingdom of heaven is near, he is saying that except for our lack of repentance, The kingdom is here. It's as close as our recognition of God's presence, love, and power in our lives.